everyone, and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy, and in this video, we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by simply utilizing the timestamps in the description below. Starting off with Joan of Arc, finally, after a while, without any news on that last elusive book, we have for you the core scenario book. And as always, you'll find the links to the respective documents in the video description below and in the What's Up Wednesday update. We want to thoroughly thank all our proofreaders on our Discord server for their invaluable assistance with this book, which was by far the most difficult one because a majority of the 12 scenarios present have been heavily reworked. Indeed, you may not even recognize some of them. This, however, concludes the long development road we've had in updating and putting a fresh coat of paint on all previously existent Joan of Arc material for this 1.5 update. We're now finishing up the implementation of your feedback in the various books already posted, which will now include this one, so feel free to leave comments as always, which will then let us assemble the outstanding scenario book containing all existing Joan of Arc scenarios before moving on to more boring production-related matters. As usual, feedback is welcomed and appreciated and will be evaluated and possibly implemented before everything goes to print. We also hope to be able to share with you guys soon some new sneak peeks of the Teutonic Knights expansion. So stay tuned. On to Solomon Kane. As you know, most people on our team were on vacation during the last couple of weeks. So we don't have an update from the factory to share, but we have made inquiries and we will get back to you with more information on production in our next newscast. Now, in our last video, we started sharing with you one of the adventures of the Africa expansion, Wings in the Night, Act 1. We left our Puritan in the west coast of Africa, trying to escape a leopard. In Act 2, we find him sleeping on top of a tree, and in the morning, he spies from the top of a hill a village with bamboo and mud huts. But our hero has yet to encounter one more threat. And this time, he doesn't face a common enemy, but a winged one. And the battle takes place in the skies. Now at this point, the choices you make will define the outcome not only of the battle, but of the whole adventure. Will Solomon be defeated by this new winged enemy? Will he manage to survive and continue his quest? What will he find next? Join us in the next newscast to find out more. On to Super Fantasy Brawl. The game is currently on the ships. Now, on the screen next to me, you'll see all of the information that we have as far as the shipments that are coming to the North American, European, and Australian hubs. The Asian shipment has arrived in Asia, and we are waiting for more information from the hub on the process they are currently following. As you can understand, until the boats reach the ports, we won't have much information to share with you, but we will let you know on the delivery of the games in Asia, which will be faster, and we will also notify you as soon as the games arrive in their respective ports. Moving on to Enchanters, the production is moving along nicely. The factory informed us that they are expecting to complete production by September 16th, so we expect everything to be on the boats in that same month. We also have some great news as we have received and validated the white samples of the game. In the pictures that follow, you'll see a comparison between the former deluxe box of the game, the Overlord box, and the new deluxe box that you will get if you backed the higher tier during the Kickstarter or if you purchased the box separately. As you can see, the new deluxe box fits all the cards, either sleeved or not. It also has a space on the bottom right to fit the rolled neoprene mats. On top, you can see that it also has space for the tokens of the game. We certainly hope that you're as excited as we are about how these turned out. Moving on to Steam Watchers, the team has basked in the warmth of the dog days of summer and is now back at it. And to be fair, JB, Severine, and Louis Marie have tested the heck out of Steam Watchers. Specifically, they tested the expansions together for heavier games. They ruled out a few things, clarified and made precisions where it was needful, but overall the feedback has been minor. 
We're moving to producing final files for the core and we'll move to the expansions very soon. Now to our leader of the day. Snow Leopard Lover Razvan is the war leader of the Minrao. The blue glint you can see in the Snow Leopard's eyes are not just for show. They are the trademark of Minrao tamed beasts. Who knows what the clan that's so well known for their biological experiments do to them. Finally, to Hell the Last Saga. For this new update, we want to tell you about the anticipated tabletop simulator module of Hell the Last Saga, which will allow you to demo the game online. The TTS module is nearing completion. It took a little while longer than expected because we decided to replace the standees with 3D renders of the miniatures. In order to avoid significant calculation time and overloading of the application, Michael, our 3D integration specialist, had to downgrade the number of polygons of the original models while making sure not to sacrifice the overall rendering quality. Even if these renders are not as aesthetically pleasing as the real deal, we are rather satisfied with the result, as you can see with these still images. We still have to adjust the colors of the materials, the objective being to provide you with a material as close as possible to the physical version. But we will, of course, inform you here and on the Facebook group about the availability of the module as soon as possible. The last step of the work will be to prepare a practical document so that users can play independently without the help of a game master, which has always been the case until now in demos or videos using the TTS module. As for the physical version, we have just received copies of the prologue prototype that will be used to film demo games in the coming weeks. For the first time, the team can finally get their hands on real elements and see the ergonomics live. No more scribbled papers and stickers on the dice. Leo, who is at Trick Track with some members of the team, will tell you more about it tonight during the live cover from Orléans. And that's it for this week. Thanks so much for joining us for another newscast. And until next time, stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.